Hey fam, uh, we got smoke neck over here, uh, fibbling and bubbling and, you know, promoting, you know, how the black churches should accept homosexuality, you know, like everybody forgot about the Sodom and Gomorrah and the burning up uh, of the Sodomites. So let's go. Uh, a question coming in from uh, Black185 in our, in our uh, digital community said, do you, do you think, I'm assuming, uh, the LGBT community and the black church can coexist? Absolutely. I, I, let me push that question because that, that's... Of course this motherfucker, absolutely. Absolutely. We will bring abomination right in the church and then we'll allow that because, you know, in order for the church to flourish, we have to have abomination right in the pulpit, uh, just like this bastard right here, another faker. So it's obvious, yes, church ain't turning nobody away. How should the black church and LGBT community exist? I think it's going to be diverse from church to church. Every church has a different opinion on the issue, and every gay person is different. And I think that to, to... Every church is going to have a what, and every gay person is what? Every gay person is the same. Gay. They gay. Okay? Gay, and they are committing abomination. It's gay. The fuck is this one talking about? Okay. Speak the church, the black church or white church or any kind of church you want to call it, are all the same. It's totally, totally. And why church is segregated? Uh, God is not segregated. Why is the church is segregated then? Huh? Why you got a black church and a white church? Why you got 45 million different religions? Only one creator of everything that made everything. What the fuck is going on? Then we got this little bastard right here telling us how they got abomination in the church. Listen to this one. Not true, and all gay people are not the same. The, the, the types of relationships that are afforded are based on the types of people in each individual case. Yes. And the LGBTs of wipes and sorts have to find a household of worship that reflects what your views are and what you believe like it. Right. So if your views are going against the creator of everything, you have to find a church like that, you know. I know I don't know about anybody else, but I was mortified when they start putting those damn rainbow flags up on the church that was supposed to be symbolizing a house that we're supposed to be uh, worshiping the Creator. You know, because how can you get in the pulpit and accommodate abomination when it goes against everything of the Creator? And gay brings on the extinction of humans. That's, there goes the argument right there. You want to be free, brave, and gay, and then all the humans will be dead because two men can't procreate and two women can't procreate. So how is this something that should be in a house of worship? But let this bastard go ahead and break it on down. Uh, we should allow abomination to creep right on in to the churches where we're supposed to be um, representing, you know, what is not abomination. Ugh anybody else and the church should have the right to have its own convictions and values if you don't like those convictions and values you totally disagree with it don't try to change my house move into your own and and establish that sort of thing and find somebody who gets what you get about faith and I, trust me i've talked to enough lgbt they are not all the same oh for sure they're all, they're all Christians, no, no. yes they're all gay and they're all performing abominable acts that's the same I don't know what the fuck this one talking about. Oh, uh, but how, how do we... First of all, has your thinking evolved on this? E evolved and evolving. Mm -hmm. Evolved and evolving. What, what, I, I, that's exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to evolve the church into a more demonic state so that you can clearly see that it is not about uh, the one that gave us breath. That, right, exactly. It's trying to evolve the churches into the true demonic things that they are. Yes, continue. Where are you? I think that where I am is to better understand we bought the church, bought into the myth that this was a Christian nation. And once you get past that, which a lot of people are going to criticize me because they're still going to think it's Christian nation, which is a whole different show. Mm -hmm. But once you begin to understand that democracy and, and that a republic actually is designed to be an overarching system to protect our unique nuances, then we no longer look for public policy to reflect biblical ethics. If we can. Do oh, OK, so in other words. Uh, forget anything that you have learned about abomination. We're going to not reflect that. We're going to take on those new nuances that abomination is okay and forgive it 
and then put that in your house of worship. Yeah, this is a fancy talking fucker right here for a fake boy. <laughs> but all it's doing is letting you know that it's an abomination. And it's bringing it right on into his house. And trying to get you to accept it too. Because Jesus forgives abomination. Right, or what you would call separation of church and state. Yeah. Then we can dwell together more effectively. Because atheists, agnostics, uh, Jews, all types of people, Muslims pay into the government. The government then cannot reflect one particular view over another just because we are the dominant group of religious people in the country because those numbers are changing every day. We need a neutralized government. Yes, those numbers are changing every day because every day we get to see more and more that abominations are running earth. And they slid abomination right up into your worship area. And what did you do? They brainwashed you into accepting abomination. Yet y'all can flip that same book back, the Bible from its holy book, and go right back to the OG God in that book that was that the answer to diversity <laughs> was fire and destruction. Burn it down. Burn it down. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. But now, here, they're telling us, you know what? Accept it. Accept it. Embrace it. Because you'll be brave and free. And pass it on to your children. That protects our right to disagree with one another and agree with one another. Mm -hmm. So that covers what happens outside the church. Right. Inside the church, has your thinking uh, biblically, scripturally, hermeneutically shifted at all? Yes, it has. I remember back in the day when this one right here was totally against all abomination. That's how they, that's how they get us. Was totally against all abomination. Uh, you know, then the sun turned gay. <laughs> and that's how they do it, too. They have to grab our heartstrings like it was, you know, oh, my goodness, my son. You know, I was all against this right here. But now I'm a backup because it's my son and I understand abomination now. And now I can forgive it because it's my son. Uh Abomination doesn't change because it's your child. Abomination doesn't change because it's your brother or sister. Abomination doesn't change uh, because it may become one of your parents. It is what it is. And this one can do all kind of fancy fucking talking and throw up all of those extra words to try to accommodate it. But abomination is abomination, period. The reason I ask that is because I talk to a lot of ministers now, and there was that big conference out in South Africa in the last couple of weeks where people from all over the world were there, and this is one of the issues that came up along with race and other things. And, and one of the questions was, is, is there a way to approach Christian tradition, Christian scripture, in, 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 in light of a new understanding of LGBT? For example, uh, 18th century, there might have been a particular understanding of what slavery meant in relation to Paul, in relation to the New Testament, etc., cetera, mm -hmm. uh, that has shifted to the point that it is socially accepted that irrespective of what text says, literally, we don't support slavery as a body, mm -hmm. right? And, and even though it varies church church, most churches don't support it. So <laughs> right, there right. might be a few out there that <laughs> we don't get invited to those. Yeah. But, but While we uh, have this side profile here, a smoke neck here on the right, uh, let us notice the T-Rex syndrome going on right there and the arm right here. T.D. Jakes is a female, okay, that wears a whole mask, okay, and that has hair up under this thing right here because it's not bald, okay? I did a video a while ago uh, here. I may have to look that one up because they keep blocking it down where I went in depth on this mask that it's wearing right here, okay? It has a full mask that it pulls down over it because it appeared that it had cornrows or something up under it, okay? So this is a faker right here. It's an abomination itself. And most of them in the pulpit, the ones we know, they're abominations. They're fake boys playing girls and fake girls playing boys. And that's why they're pushing this abomination so strongly. Because they are that. And we sitting back there, oh, thank you, Jesus. Now I love abomination too. Because you know what? <sighs> Jesus loves everybody. You know, nah, Jesus loves and forgives every damn thing. Just cry and pray and forgive every shit. And don't forget to pay Jesus. 
But but similarly, is there's room for that same kind of shift? I think that shift has to go on behind the closed doors of the church because I think in the mainstream America, anybody who doesn't agree with you, we have a, a derogatory name to call you. Mm -hmm. And I think it oversimplifies the complexity of text. The fact that you have fidelity to the scriptures as you have been taught does not mean that you're necessarily homophobic or any other kind of phobia, but yet in mainstream America... We need to be homophobic, uh, gayophobic, uh, abominationophobic, liophobic, okay, sodomitophobic, okay? All they're doing is trying to break down all of the things that we, we should be against that is not good for the human. How is being gay helps humans? It is the extinction of humans. But this one here says, you know what, let's embrace that. Let's embrace that to all the humans gone, I guess. You know. It's because it, it <laughs> try to talk with all of these fancy words and stuff and try to speak all eloquently and blah, 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 like that. You know what I'm saying? Grab your heartstrings, you know. They give you this idiot right here and gave him some extra words. I'm sorry, and gave us some extra words on there. But all it's here to do is to promote abomination and rob you. Erica, anybody who doesn't line up with the particular worldview, we give them a name to ostracize them, much like we were given names to ostracize us. This name calling does not depict the, the struggle that many people have theologically. I think the argument has to be theological and not sociological. The mm -hmm. fact that the world has turned that way doesn't mean that the word has changed that way. Mm -hmm. The argument for, for clergy fundamentals... Okay, so the word has changed that way. So what part of Sodom and Gomorrah has changed in the word because it's those it's the same thing and is that why they don't give out the old testament uh as now and they pass around the new testament which does not even mention nothing about sodom and gomorrah and the destruction of that whole area due to sodomites where did the word sodom might come from is sodom and gomorrah it comes from that because there were sodomites there performing a perversions and the God of that book right there was like, no, no, no. Burn them, burn them. But no, now we don't like tortures anymore. <laughs> we just embrace wicked shit and pass it to our children. Uh, that's the Jesus way. Clergy has to be a theological argument. It cannot be a sociological one. If I went out of time, I would push you on this. And one day we're going, I'm going to bring you back just to talk about this because okay. I'm, I'm fascinated by your take on it. Um, and I, I want to not just chat. And again, I like for us to look at these two uh, presentations that we have right here. These things. Anyway, uh, back to how Smoke Neck over here has this T Rex syndrome right here and this dropping of the shoulders. Okay? challenge you. I challenge you. This is a fake boy right here. Because they cannot represent the God of Abomination without being one. And y'all know, I think that thing that they put up there for the Jesus is a drag king. Okay? They gave us the book of the Balfamet with the first, with the creation of the Balfamet with Eve. Take out that rib and you have Eve. You take out that rib, you also have Cardi B, Beyonce, Meg Thee Stallion, all of the dudes that we see now jumping around and prancing around in wigs. It's the book of abomination. It's, I call it the holy, the Balfamet's holy book because that's all it does. It shows us how they started off the first Balfamet and trickled it all the way down and gave us to Jesus, the son of a Balfamet. Uh, just like we see Blue Ivy now, the son of a Balfamet. <laughs> I, I want to understand your thinking on this because the thing I appreciate about you most is that you operate in good faith. Mm -hmm. uh, you're honest, you're transparent, and about your strength. You're honest, you're transparent. If it was honest, it would pull that mask off. It would pull that mask off and tell everybody it was a female, if it was honest. If it was honest, it would tell you it was an abomination. If it was honest. If it was honest, it would tell you religion is fucking you up. If it was honest. And it was transparent. If it was transparent, yank that damn mask off. They kill me with that. You're honest and you're transparent. And the whole time they up there lying and trying to brainwash you to accept abomination. Fuck out of here. 
struggle with these things mm -hmm. and about your convictions about well, it. Well, it's a complex issue. It's a real complex issue that it was in the Bible days. Sexuality versus spirituality. Paul spends a lot of time wrestling back and forth trying to understand uh, should a woman wear her head covered? Is, you know, uh, should you cut your hair? I mean, they grapple. Should a man be with a man and should a woman be with a woman? Okay? It, nobody got to spend a whole bunch of time grappling about that. Uh, the answer is, fuck no. And there you go. That's it. No. I don't know what Paul was struggling with, but, was, but Paul was not struggling with abomination. <laughs> not with men ha having sex with men. Unless you're trying to tell us a new story. Oh. <laughs> Back then, and we're grappling now because we are humans and we are flawed and we're not God. Yeah. Once you understand you're not God, you, you leave yourself an out clause <laughs> to grow. <laughs> to, yeah, to grow. Yeah. I wish they would get out with their claws of earth. Yeah, but we all can't get what we want. Because if we could, wouldn't be no abominations. But we do have it, and this is why we accept it, because they put these bastards in front of us and give us a whole bunch of blah 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 words. And they claim they love us and they love God. But they're not talking about our God. They're talking about theirs, the God of abomination. Uh, the one that you can read on daily uh, in that Balfamit's holy book. And if you guys stop looking at that book, like God uh, drop, start dropping books and CDs and stuff from, from the sky, then you would be aware of it, okay? And King James wrote more than one book. When you find a good author, don't you check out another book? We're going to check out that book of demonology. And see if you feel convicted by that one, too. Like you feel for that bafflement book. <laughs> Dripping in blood. <laughs> it's just crazy. Y'all be safe out here. And fuck that abomination of forgiving and loving. Okay? <laughs> These fucking demons.